Television channels are incessantly hosting aviation experts, each with their own theory of what could have happened to Air India Flight AI-171. There is nothing wrong with theories, so long as limelight-hungry experts don't try to pass off wild assumptions as conclusive proof. There's a TikTok captain who has already blamed pilot error, changed his theory to double-engine failure, and who knows, may just jump to a third theory soon for some views. He was forced to change his theory though when a better quality video of the Boeing 787 Dreamliner moments before the crash appeared to show something intriguing. The ram air turbine or the RAT appeared to be in a deployed position on the aircraft. And in this video, we'll look at what the RAT is, how it works, when it's deployed and why it is one of the last lines of defense in the case of an air emergency. Before we begin though, I'd just like to say that hundreds of lives were lost in this grave tragedy and at the print, as we always do, we have stayed away from any sort of conjecture. What we'll discuss in this video is how the RAT, if it was indeed deployed, works. We will not give a verdict on what happened on flight AI-171. So have you ever heard of a tiny turbine tucked into the underbelly of an aircraft that can swing out mid-air automatically? The ram air turbine is a small retractable windmill-like device mounted on the aircraft. It deploys in the case of a complete loss of power, which could be caused by electrical failure, hydraulic failure, or double engine failure. It uses the airflow from the aircraft's forward motion to spin and generate emergency power to aid the flying crew. Think of it as a backup power generator. It is deployed only after both the primary and the auxiliary power sources are lost and during normal conditions, it remains retracted into the fuselage. The RAT converts kinetic energy, which comes from ram air, into mechanical energy that is then translated into hydraulic or electrical power. Simply put, ram air refers to the dynamic air pressure created by a moving object and is used in several engineering solutions, not just in aircraft. This turbine is connected through a gearbox to a generator or a hydraulic pump. Depending on the aircraft type, it's usually about 1.5 to 3 feet in diameter, so not very big. Multiple aircraft, including those manufactured by Boeing, Airbus, Embraer and Bombardier have this feature. Do note that not all aircraft carry rats. For example, the Boeing 737 does not have a rat. It just uses battery power and the APU for emergencies. The APU actually stands for Auxiliary Power Unit and is another crucial mechanism for safety. The purpose of the RAT is to supply power for essential flight systems. We're talking about 5 to 15 kilowatts of power, just enough to keep the flight controls responsive, uh, instrumentation alive, and maintain basic communications with ground control. It deploys in three scenarios. One of them is dual engine failure. Remember the miracle landing of the US Airways flight on the Hudson River? The RAT was deployed on this flight after it lost both engines to, due to a bird strike and it gave pilots just enough time to reach the river and land on it. According to the full investigation report that the NTSB released later, the RAT was found in the extended position when the aircraft was recovered from the water. A Hollywood movie called Sully has actually been made on the startling save by Captain Sullenberger. Tom Hanks plays the lead role in the 2016 film and I highly recommend that you watch it. In another scenario, the RAT is deployed if main generators and the APU fail and there is a complete loss of electrical power. It also comes on if there's a complete hydraulic system failure in the aircraft. But here's the catch. The RAT, as in the case of any other extreme emergency fallback system, has some limitations. It produces a very small amount of power and even that power depends entirely on the airspeed. Below about 100 knots, the output drops off. The RAT also can't power engines, cabin lighting, or full hydraulics. As in the case of landing gear, it also adds drag on the aircraft, reducing the range to which the aircraft can glide and land. If we talk of flight AI-171, if the aircraft suffered a total electrical or hydraulic system loss, the RAT would have been deployed by design. But it is highly unlikely that it would have helped. Why? because the maximum altitude the jet achieved was only 625 feet, according to flight radar's data. Moments after takeoff, the aircraft was at a low altitude and low airspeed. And even if there was enough speed to generate power, the aircraft was flying too low and there just wasn't enough time for it to come in handy in any way. Of course, 
If it is established beyond doubt that the rat was deployed, it confirms one thing, that there was an immediate catastrophic failure brought on by one of the three scenarios we just discussed. So, when does rat come in handy? In a high altitude crisis, it can mean the difference between a controlled descent and a horrific ditch. In aviation emergencies, every second counts. And sometimes, even the smartest technologies like the RAT have their limitations.